Can I start? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Kick off the day with some TT Red information. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone, yes. ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Happy New Year in Jerusalem. And uh, what is this channel? <laughs> can we switch to something more no. interesting? <laughs> this is good so people can read. When yeah. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, so I will continue what, where we stopped the other day. Uh, and uh, that was the, uh, 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 my attempt to derive the scattering matrix of uh, TT bar deformed theory. Uh, we have uh, observed that if we don't worry about uh, fluctuations in classical theory, the field TT bar could be represented in, as a total derivative at the price of introducing the the, the prime form uh, of, of energy momentum tensor. So uh, TT bar was uh, a derivative, uh, something of this sort, uh, E rho sigma, E uh, mu lambda, you can actually simplify it, but I don't uh, really not need it. Mm, B mu and D sigma B lambda, and B is a is a is a, a field defined uh, in terms of T mu D uh, E mu lambda D lambda B uh, mu. Okay, so it's a non B is a non-local field, uh, uh, but it, it makes a, 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 a continuity equation for T <coughs> uh, identity and uh, and the T T bar uh, defined uh, our way the determinant of the energy momentum tensor uh, turns out to be a derivative of that in such a way that if I integrate uh, T T bar. It, uh, it, it becomes integrator uh, tt bar of x over x, d to x. It becomes a boundary term. Uh, so if I have some domain, d uh, in, uh, uh, in two dimensions, right, like this, and I have a boundary of that domain, the integral re reduces to boundary uh, integral okay like something like this uh the the, the only the, so this is a boundary uh but uh the situation might be it might be more complicated because if i have some insertions inside the boundary would be more complicated because the field could be not single valued and we need to make cuts and stuff so it's a uh, it's uh, it's it's formally very very advantage uh, maybe a very advantageous but one needs to be careful. The before before going before using it, let me uh, say some words uh, how we are sure that this representation in terms of total derivative of something semi-local. Uh, I already explained in which sense the field B is not local and uh, why it's better than generic uh, non-local field. Uh, something which I call semi-local. All right. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I want to, to say a few words about uh, why I be, uh, we, we have to be sure, we can be sure that similar, uh, similar formula exists in the, in the quantum case. All right. Uh, namely, uh, uh, the, the although the field B mu is non-local, one can show that it's uh, going to satisfy operator product expansion. Let's say I have some local field O A sitting at X prime, and this is local, so it's quantum field. All 
All right. Uh, so I, I can write down operator product expansion. Uh, the, the only uh, peculiarity is going to be that there would be an, uh, a term with some coefficient function, which I did, let me denote it c hat uh, of x minus x prime, which comes with the with the with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the operator which is derivative of O A of x prime. So these dot dots are local terms. Uh, no, sorry, uh, the, uh, exactly different. This is local term, but but the coefficient c hat is not single valued. So if you take uh, the c hat of x and make a, a, its continuation around zero, so I have uh, some contour gamma going around zero. So I make a continuation uh, around zero. This uh, returns me c of x plus one, and that would would uh, fulfill the monodromy properties of the. Why is it one? What's that? Why is it one? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's because I I decided to normalize the field B in such a way that it's y. It's one. If you prefer one half, I I can accommodate. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the the. But are you free to renormalize B? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, this this yields. I mean, this the, this relation fixes normalization. You're right. Thank you. And then it comes with one. But that's what I was asking. Why is it one? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, it's because the, it's. Uh, its normalization and fixed is fixed by. Well, it is because integral of t mu nu e nu lambda dx lambda of x o of x naught over the contour around is d over dx naught mu or with the coefficient one. That's, that's normalization of energy momentum tensor. OK? So you, uh, you're right. I mean, that's not the, the B normalization of B is inherited from the normalization of T. And T is normalized in such a way that the momentum comes with the coefficient one. All right. Uh, so, so that's. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's the, the only non uh, term which comes with uh, with non single valued coefficient. Other coefficients are single valued, but but they are not necessarily a local uh, come with local fields, because we we definitely would have a non local terms, and in fact uh, one can isolate a, no, a semi local term, and uh, so in such a way that the rest of them. Uh, the rest of the terms are local. Namely, uh, if I now ignore this one, the operator product expansion d mu of x o a again of x prime uh, would in, in, in include only one. See, uh, see, uh, one can define it in such a way that it would include uh, a single term, uh, which is semi-local, which I the, the the field which comes come with it, I call B B O of x prime, and the rest of them if uh, are furnished, furnished up lo uh, with local terms. All right, so this these terms uh, this is generally any combination of of, of local fields, and the uh, beauty of it is that this uh, this. The field comes with the coefficient which is constant, which is with the coefficient one. This is a rather elementary property because uh, if you look at this product and take its derivative d over dx sigma, all right, you observe that b mu of x sigma is like uh, e sigma e sigma nu 
atom nu. So it's local field. So the whole thing must be arranged in such a way that if you hit it by a derivative over x, only local terms remain. All right? And then, of course, uh, this defines the field, this operator product expansion defines uh, B O. Uh, it actually has an index mu, right? Uh, in addition to A. All right, uh, and uh, and uh, it defines it modulo local terms. It defines uniquely modular local terms. All right, uh, very good. But that's what we need because because now we have uh, this uh, uh, this uh, TT bar. Uh, in particular, we can we can. Uh, uh, use uh, t take uh, t for the for this local operator and define uh, uh, what I call B t What I call BT, which is uh, if I take a, a definition, which I, if I take the combination e, e mu lambda uh, b mu of x uh, t lambda rho of x prime, uh, it's just a product of uh, semi-local B to ten energy momentum tensor with uh, some combination of that, uh, things. And it's arranged in special way to be useful for my purposes. So it has one vector index here, uh, and uh, it's a, a bt rho of x prime plus local terms. Again, it defines this field uh, uniquely up to local terms. And then uh, uh, simple manipulation shows that if I take again T of x and x prime, the local product of energy momentum tensor, or this determinant like combination, mu lambda e nu rho, T mu nu of x, T lambda rho of x prime, the, the, the thing which I started with, okay, and then, uh, then uh, it is going, and then, and then I use this, uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, representation. So T mu nu now is represented in terms of B, uh, semi-local field B. I find that it is now E mu lambda, E nu rho, E nu sigma, uh, D over dx sigma, B mu of x. I'm just using representation of T in this formula uh, in terms of B times T lambda rho of x prime. All right, so again, I can simplify this combination to make this into d rho. Uh, so it's d, it becomes, this may, may disappear, the price of this becoming d over dx rho. And now uh, the, the, the derivative over x rho, uh, over x rho can be, can be replaced by the sum of derivatives over uh, x rho and the x, rho pri x prime rho, because the second one acts on the on the energy momentum tensor and uh, uh, up to contact terms. This is going to to be satisfied. So, so if I now plug in this operator product expansion, all right. Uh, so. So for this this operator product expansion, I, I I I recall that my local terms have this form C rho uh, T of x minus x prime 
time sum uh, operator T A operators A uh, of X prime. So these are local operators. Uh, because this C now depends on the uh, X minus X prime, this derivative uh, gets right through. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, coefficients and, and act on the on the uh, on the act on the on the field itself. So we conclude that T of uh, T of X and X prime, which was uh, uh, before was a uh, uh, in uh, was a de uh, was a definition of T T bar, uh, now is a total derivative, right? It's a e mu lambda uh, Wait, uh, so this is uh, exactly this. Okay, so it's a d rho uh, b uh, b t rho of x prime. Plus uh, derivatives of local. Okay, so uh, many, many, uh, infinitely many terms, which all involve first local uh, fields and deri and also they are derivatives of local. Okay, so only term which is non-local uh, is this one, and it's also a derivative, but but of something similar. Cool. Now, if we, we it's, it's, how do you see that what's that? How do you, see that uh, you could simply, you could, uh, I mean, first of all, it comes from this operator product expansion. This one is non-local, all right? So uh, it, if I consider correlation function in this, in which uh, was uh, this, uh, this whole insertion is made. Right, and they take it as an aggregate, and bring around some other local field. Okay, this would involve uh, bringing this uh, semi-local B around the local field, and uh, I already erased that. But but the property of the local field that it would emit a term additional. It's the, the this this is not this wouldn't return you to original value, but would emit a a, a term proportional to to uh, to to the uh, to the uh, uh, gradient of the of the operator of the thing which you are you are surrounding which you are going around okay uh, so it's a uh, it's definitely not uh, doesn't have a trivial monodromy property so I, I cannot I cannot express it in ter in terms of local fields all right so anyways. Now, uh, let me ta try to take advantage of it. And uh, in fact, uh, there are many applications to this formula, but, but, uh, but, uh, but I will use it to come up with the S matrix, which I, uh, which I uh, wrote down before, OK? If I would want to multiply B with B, if you multiply B with B, you you get another semi-local field, but uh, it would it would uh, it would have more complicated property in that if you bring it around something, it would c it would emit the field which is uh, which is semi-local itself. All right, so there is a kind of ladder of of degrees of semi-locality. So so if you uh, the zeroth level is local fields. If you bring around the, the level one, if you bring around, you, you emit something local. If you bring, if you take level two, bring around, it's very much uh, like uh, Lucius integrals of motion in non-local integrals of motion in sigma model or, or generic where you have currents and uh, something which. Yes. Uh, uh, well, yes, because you can take, uh, because this, uh, uh, you, you just take your operator product. The, this or this, or this semi-local field appear as prime forms of, of, uh, of some local operators, right? Of various degree. And you just take your operator product expansion and uh, take a prime form, all right? 
with, with a very controllable degree of ambiguity, you get yourself operator product expansion uh, of the semi-local field. Well, there is ambiguity, but it's... So if you take the operator product expansion up to degree one semi-locals, you get a degree two? Yes. And so on. And so on, yeah. It's basically, I mean, uh, I mean the, the kind of uh, nice representation of it, which if you forget about divergences and stuff, is line uh, for the degree one is line integral of energy density. Uh, the, the degree two would be ordered line integral of two energy densities and, and three and four and so forth. It's, uh, it's tempting to, to exponentiate, but... Uh, but I uh, let me not go into that. All right. Anyway, uh, the uh, the uh, so I have this uh, uh, this representation, and now I want to to consider scattering theory, right? Uh, and, uh, and and of course I can I can if I consider. Uh, th let me first. Remind you the deformation formula for generic def gen general deformation formula for scattering matrix, right? If you have an action and you change it to, uh, by some infinitesimal portion integral O, right? Uh, right? Then uh, uh, you, uh, the deformation of a scattering matrix, let me call it uh, Q1, Q1 dot 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 to m this is going to be out state uh, p1 pn this is going to be in state and I take delta deformation of this guy under this uh, of course I mean this is a textbook thing you you have to of course go into Minkowski signature uh, integrate now this thing over space and real time and you get yourself I delta alpha in uh, the same in state, uh, in and out state, QM uh, integral O of X and T now, of P1, Pn, in and out. All right, uh, that's uh, something which you basically find in the first 10 pages of your favorite quantum field theory textbook. Uh, and, uh, and here I, I want to, to, to use this TT bar thing of X and T. And, and uh, because it's, uh, we, we, have, we have found nice representation of that in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, some semi-local field. Uh, the, uh, the, the we can we can bring it to the boundary. So, so the, uh, as usual, uh, as everyone uh, is is, is uh, now does automatically, you draw a big uh, slab of space-time. So this is time. This is x, and I have a slab. And uh, this is the boundary of my domain, which is going to be brought to infinity. So this uh, becomes integral over boundary. Uh, and, uh, and so this integral, if I ignore uh, the, the, the parts which are at, at large space-like separations, space-like distances uh, 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 from uh, uh, where we live, uh, then it's going to be uh, going to become I think I have to use the other blackboard because unfortunately the formula involves two terms the, for the past and for the future and both are important uh, so integral uh, my, int my, my, my for if I, if I use that TT bar of X now is uh, D rho of the T rho of, of x and t, of x and t, and uh, do the careful calculation. I find that I find that uh, that uh, uh, my integral here reduces to 
the integral of uh, tt bar of x and t becomes the difference of two terms. It's an integral integral uh, dx uh, of from minus infinity to infinity. I drop the boundary terms here. Uh, Bt of x and t uh, at uh, t going to plus infinity minus a uh, similar integral uh, dx of b at x and uh, b b naught of x and t uh, uh, from uh, 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 at t going to minus infinity. All right, uh, and uh, and uh, then you could you could I mean in order to clarify a little bit meaning. You could uh, you could uh, resolve it in terms of energy momentum tensor, and you find that this this is uh, this the first term. Each of the terms uh, can be represented as ordered integral. Uh, so integral dx uh, dx prime at t uh, minu t mu naught of x and t uh, t nu naught of x prime and t, and you have to order it, x, uh, x prime is below x, it doesn't matter which, but you have to order that, and uh, so uh, so this is a representation for a a any time, uh, but when but you have to take a difference at large uh, t, uh, in, the, in the far distant future, in the bright future, minus the 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 value at the times a memorable minus 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 yes yes B T yes thank you thank you yes otherwise I I would return just energy momentum yes thank you. All right, so this is this is representation, and from uh, I mean these are not integrals of motion in, in full theory. No, they depend on time, but they have a they become asymptotic integrals of motion and are uh, are the, act diagonally on the asymptotic state. All right, so uh, so let me write it down, um, I, because I think the 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 formula could be written down right from the form of this equation. Basically, uh, bas uh, I mean, it can be obtained uh, uh, by careful taking a symptotic limit, but uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 quite easy to understand it. Let's say we are talking uh, infinite future. Then the first term. Uh, so let me let me write it this way: uh, integral dx from minus infinity to infinity, which is the same integral from zero to x. Uh, over x prime, the, the the first integral counts the overall momenta all the way up to the point x, and then uh, you multiply it uh, to the uh, energy density uh, at the point x and integrate the whole thing. All right, so it's going to because now the particles are well separated. The first term, uh, each contribution of the second term is accounting to for, for one particle. But it is also multiplied by the momenta, uh, by the sum of the momenta of all particles to the left of this point. All right, uh, and uh, now the the difference between in and out state is that in the in the in the bright future, all slow particles are to the left, and all fast faster particles are to the right. While in the out, uh, in the that's in the out state. While in the in state, it's uh, it's all the way, uh, the other way around. The fastest particles are to the to the left, and the slowest are to the right because they are yet to catch up with each other. All right, and uh, because of that, you 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 expect this formula that uh, for out states uh, q uh, one q m uh, big integral 
dt zero of x and t equals to to to, to the limit uh, the limit of t t, t going to uh, plus infinity all right is going to be just uh, minus sum of uh, over this uh, a qi wedge qj uh, uh, the sum is taken over over uh, qi below qj that's uh, the, pr this is the spatial components of the momenta and uh, and it's eigenstate so it's it's a factor in front of q, uh, q, uh, qm out and uh, for in state you have a for 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 the limit of uh, of t to to t to minus infinity you it becomes a, 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 a diagonal in the in the basis of of uh, in states all right so bt zero of x and t times p1 pn in is going to be sum over pi uh, below pj uh, q uh, pi uh, wedge pj uh, pi p1 pn in all right uh, and the sign difference is because the because the, I, I, I took here the same ordering uh, and uh, this, when you change ordering the sign changes and of course, I mean, if I if I use this formula, I immediately come up with the with the formula for the deformation of this matrix, which is easily integrated, and so forth. All right. Uh, so the, the the remark, uh, yeah. By the way, first of all, uh, uh, let me stress it's uh, it's uh, it's something which I uh, well I, is is in doing so I ignored the the local term. Right, and this is because uh, the if you add the uh, uh, derivative of local term to the action, it uh, becomes a boundary term in terms of a local something local, and it simply multiplies the, the wave functions by some factors, uh, and uh, it amounts to unitary transformation. Here, <coughs> uh, the, although we we do integrate some total derivative and have a boundary have a boundary term as you see this is good example how non-local semi-local terms could create something which is not really a unitary transformation and they, therefore we have a, uh, we have a, some non-trivial contribution to the scattering amplitudes uh, which uh, which I, I mean look very much like a similarity transformation but not precisely so and I believe uh, the, if, if we had something like that in the laboratory, the, 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 the scattering phases could be measurable. All right? I think if, if we had this, uh, this kind of contribution, scattering phase, we measure scattering phases, right? Uh, all right. Yes, please. What's again? Can you explain where the, how, where this double integral formula comes from? This double integral formula? It's because uh, that, that's the way to, to fix uh, ambiguity in the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the BT, uh, BT uh, field, uh, or B field, or everything uh, semi-local is defined modular some local terms, right? The, one of the way to fix this ambiguity is to represent the semi-local field as line integral. So, for instance, B, one way to, to write B mu of x and t, let's say, is to write integral from minus infinity. I, if I assume, in the, as in this case, that everything goes down to infinity. To Remember, I, I told you that, uh, that the, the, the difference of the B field in two, two different points is the flow of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of, of two momentum through the contour uh, joining this point. Now I remove one of these points uh, to infinity. Let me just, instead of writing formula, say it in words. 
I, I remove one of these points to infinity, assuming that there is nothing interesting there. All right. So then it's flow of the energy uh, of the energy momentum through the contour, which which goes from minus infinity or orbit of Pluto to this point here, right? And counts all the momentum there. And that's a representation of that. Okay? Yes. So you, you said that this is a CFT and, and you said that flowing alpha is like flowing to, to the UV. But no, I didn't say that it's CFT, did I? I'm sorry. It's a deformation of the CFT. No, I didn't say that neither. I say that it's deformation of quantum field theory. I, I, I want to make it clear. I think the it's, 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 it's causing infinite confusion in some audience. Not every quantum field theory is conformal. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you wrote, you wrote a star plus uh, alpha t t bar. No I, no, I didn't write a star. I did write, I, I, at certain point, I wrote a star plus mu integral phi delta, which is more or less generic representation of a field theory. Uh, okay. Now, uh, 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 at mu equals zero, it becomes conformal. I'm actually going to discuss the relation between these two limits. But in order to discuss scattering theory in, in on some solid grounds, and that's what I'm doing, I need to assume that there are massive particles. Okay. All right? The TT bar uh, operator has a significant effect at the UV behavior of the theory. Yes. Okay, but but I could all, I, mean, I don't see anywhere here that you're changing the scale of, of your theory. So it looks like you're fixing the scale and just throwing the, 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 the parameter, which would be a different theory. Right? Yes. I mean, the, first of all, this this uh, this uh, uh, equation which I wrote down contributes to scattering phases of all processes. Okay, and in fact, this is this affects the structure of theory, because, for instance, density of states is is controlled by scattering matrix, right? So changing scattering phases actually affects the density of states, and and in fact, if you look at that, this this, uh, this uh, deformation has a dramatic effect on density of states at high energies. I, I think I'm going, uh, although the, I'm entering the, the, the here in this, in this sentence, I'm entering the area which I'm not totally clear for me. But, but it's, it's definitely true that we are, by doing this, we are affecting density of states at high energies. <coughs> yeah. So you have some abnormally high or low density of states. Yes. Something which is not intuitively compatible with the collection of local degrees of freedom. So it's not just an effective theory in IR? Well, as a matrix, it's totally, it's totally fine. I mean, if we, if we measure this, uh, if we take this as matrix, take S times H dagger, we get one. All analyticity is there. Uh, crossing symmetries there, everything is there. Actually, this S matrix was conjectured uh, exactly on the basis that it's a uh, deformation of S matrix, which in, in, in some very simple way preserve all properties of S matrix except for uh, UV behavior. that uh, much of the rest of my my discussion would be sort of about in, in, the, in this area. I'm not going to discuss scattering, really, but in some sense, it's related to scattering. Anyways, uh, I, I actually, I mean, if I forget, remind me. Keep reminding me. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, the It's all non-perturbative in alpha. It's all non-perturbative in alpha. No, if you write down the, uh, a derivative, that deals with the infinite uh, in increment of x. But it's not perturbative. I mean, 
this, uh, this, uh, this equation tells you what the derivative over alpha of the S matrix is. You can now integrate this differential equation and come up with this exponential formula which I produced the other day. I don't want, it's lo long formula, so I don't want to reproduce it again. But it's, uh, it's more or less exponential of alpha times these expressions. Hmm? I alpha. There is I over here. So this is this is the derivative of the scattering amplitude over alpha. So if I divide this and this is delta over delta alpha, this produces differential equation. Fortunately, the right hand side is independent. Well, in some ways, it depends on alpha because <coughs> because. Uh, uh, the operator itself depends on alpha, but we managed to show that its matrix elements between asymptotic states is R that's just something <coughs> only kinematics dependent. Would you like something similar for correlation function rather than This is very good question. Uh, I uh, uh, I can I, if I if I have time I will address Right, but uh, but but there is overall uh, problem, uh, yeah, overall problem here. Mm. Okay, I I might come back to this problem, but it's uh, it's uh, it's way way more complicated. Mm. Uh, yesterday, you said something about elastic scattering. Is this uh, related? Yes, it is related. This is more general. <laughs> if I if I look uh, at the at the uh, uh, the particular case of 2 to 2 elastic scattering, this converts to the formula. This, this falls down to the formula which I produced before. Uh, so we now have a general but more kind of sophisticated derivation. And it, it, fortunately, it's, uh, uh, it, it uh, complies with a much uh, more kind of detailed and elementary calculation uh, in, the, in, in simpler circumstances. So that isn't it tri triumph of, si of science? Let's <laughs> 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 say you started the original theory of the integral form. Yes. Then you're showing this deformation does not produce an elastic scattering. Yes, I can show that. What? Well, you just showed it. Well, I, I, uh, actually, I, I, uh, what I mean is if I start with, uh, with integrable theory, there is infinitely many deformations which don't produce yeah. scattering, and that this, this is one. Of them. This is one. Of them. Yes. Yes. But the, then the life becomes infinitely more interesting. Because you have all the other. Deformations. Because I have all the other deformations, and uh, and the important part. Because I I'm at the risk of not coming to that point, but I think it's very important. Is that is that uh, see uh, this uh, this uh, uh, S matrix. Uh, is uh, yes, it has some pathologies like uh, like uh, abnormal high energy behavior. But when yeah, I go to this more general deformation, I can produce deformed test matrices, which have quite decent ultraviolet behavior, but still have the same problems at the off shell in the ultraviolet, which I am going to display right now for the TT bar deformation. I say it up, up. I say it up front because I'm running into the risk of not mentioning that at all. But that's very important, I think. Also I think. Also, you said that the analytic structure doesn't change apart from. I don't know if it's important that you have some essential singularity at very large Q. Yes, exactly. Yes, but and and so there is a the the common wisdom seem to be. I mean, or wisdom gaining the the popularity is that the whole problems which I'm going to whole bunch of problems, or maybe advantages, I don't know, are closely related to this, are, are so, sort of directly related to this uh, abnormal behavior of scattering matrix at large, uh, uh, at large energies. But I want, I would like, I, 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 it's exactly, maybe I, I have to cut on, on technical stuff and bring it more, uh, maybe next time I will, I will do that. But it's, it's important that it, it's possible to, in, in case of integrable theories, all right, theories in, on their own right, 
uh, you can make uh, generalize this deformation and make it in such a way that you deform this matrix and again in controllable way uh, and uh, and uh, What's that? There'll be higher powers than more than quadratic Well, I mean, it's it has some expand uh, the scattering phases yeah. would have some expansion in terms of momentum, huh? but this expansion would converge to something. Uh, uh, when you go to asymptotic, you find you may arrange itself to to be something quite kosher. <laughs> okay, and uh, and then uh, nonetheless. If you start uh, looking into off-shell things, you find uh, something which I'm going uh, go about to display in the in the in the TT bar deformation. All right. Anyway, let me stop it. So I I just uh, I uh, the only thing I I I I I I, I have to mention that the, the, this derivation which I gave. Uh, I mean, it's, it's closely, I mean, the technique, actually, there was this uh, uh, semi-local field is closely uh, applied to this problem, is closely related to, to the, what uh, Cardi did in, 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 in the recent paper where he considered some sort of Gaussian resolution of this, that the TT bar is quadratic in components of energy momentum tension, then you do, <coughs> then you, when you do deformation, you could, Make a Gaussian resolution, and uh, then you 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 you, you integrate uh, over something which pretends to be a metric, and uh, and then it reduces to to coordinate transformation, and these coordinate transformation are the the the, the associated vector fields are semi-local fields closely related to this B. I think it's uh, it, uh, what I do is more or less equivalent, except I don't need to. I mean, it's more direct way, uh, but it's uh, it's uh, the 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 way of understanding, which is uh, which comes from Cardi, makes it so I think, at least uh, at least ideologically closer, to this uh, Jacquif Tetelboim gravity, which I'm not going to discuss, but uh, uh, but uh, but need to mention. Uh, Okay, we can can we can we postpone this discussion for like uh, fifteen twenty minutes? Okay. All right, because now I want to uh, uh, no not fifteen thirty minutes uh, because I need to discuss. So what we discuss the bulk free energy the gap. Now uh, why don't we look into the just ground state energy? And the only thing we know, we, we, we can say uh, immediately, well, not only, but one, well, one thing we can, we can assume is that the momentum is zero. So it satisfies uh, the, the Burger's equation without the driving force. And in this case, oh, I mean, the, the, there is a kind of closed form solution of this Burgess. It's interesting that this exactly driving force allows for closed form solution in elementary functions for the Burgers equation. It's uh, for non-zero momentum, it's uh, kind of, you know, involved. But for zero momentum, the solution, Burgers equation, the solution for P equals zero, the solution is, is well known. I mean, it's an, in any textbook. Uh, so uh, E of R and alpha, let me call it uh, uh, E alpha of R, the, the, the the solution where, where alpha is time and, uh, uh, and, and r is, is given by this uh, implicit equation r minus alpha e alpha of r. Okay, so this is sort of explicit or implicit form solution, but it's very easy to understand it in terms of inverse functions. So if I, I take uh, r alpha of e, inverse to inverse 
okay? And I will take uh, uh, R0 of E inverse to, 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 to E0 of R, okay? And then, then this, this formula amounts to simple affine transformation of this uh, two, ob two, two objects. Uh, so uh, in, uh, the solution is that R alpha of E is R naught, which I simply call R, or, okay, R naught uh, of E but plus alpha E. So if I start with the, some given R naught of E, I just add this, uh, this term in that way. Okay, so if I have a plot of the, of the, of the uh, energy, le some energy level as a function of R, uh, then, uh, then deformation is simply taking this axis E and bending in this or that way, uh, not bending, just uh, rotating in this or that way, uh, depending on the sign of alpha. So let me start with something like a ground state energy, E vacuum. And in some UV complete uh, quantum field theory with ultraviolet fixed point, it looks like this. All right, so <laughs> it approaches some linear uh, bulk behavior with, uh, with local de energy density, with, uh, 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 this with uh, some energy density. Mm -hmm. So this is F naught times R asymptotics. And here we have a Casimir, uh, inter uh, Casimir attraction, uh, Casimir attraction at short distance. All right. So what happens if I do, if I do this? It uh, depends on uh, now. If I do this uh, uh, tilting of the vertical axis, depends on the sign of of alpha. So if alpha is positive, uh, then uh, instead of this asymptotic, this axis. I have to tilt it this way, and this is the again line, some somewhat little bit rotated line of of bulk theory, and I find the behavior of ground state energy like this. I even did continuation to negative R because it's very straightforward in that case, and uh, and for alpha negative, I I have instead this one and that this is still a bulk uh, part, and I have something like this, all right? So let's meditate a little bit around it. Both, both, uh, both, uh, both pictures look uh, peculiar, all right? And this one looks uh, particularly peculiar because your, your, uh, your ground state energy has a, has a finite value at, uh, regular value at zero. No Casimir effect at all. Uh, no, uh, so it's, uh, it's something which is hardly, con uh, in my mind, hardly compatible with the idea of local degrees of freedom. Uh, so, so, uh, so let me, uh, I actually want to, uh, want to, to eventually some part of today's talk will be devoted to my attempt to show that at least uh, in some cases, this situation corresponds to the to the theory, which is which is, which is two-dimensional quantum field theory, is not quite healthy. That means there is no ground state. What's that? It's uh, it's analytic continuation. Yes. What's that? It's not times, it's function. Uh, it's function. E naught, so let's say I'm given E naught as a function of R, okay? I, and I tell my computer to substitute R, R uh, for R, uh, this kind of combination. All right? So, so let, me, let me just, at, at this point, a little, uh, stop a little bit about that. Uh, and uh, it's something which I, I, I think, I mean, 
I, I, I would be eager to discuss in general, but I don't have myself very good idea how to interpret in general. So let me uh, uh, call this alpha positive strange region. And this, this one looks like, uh, if I look at the negative alpha, I, wh what I do, if I go from large r, eventually I hit a, a singularity, square root singularity. And if, if I try to analytically continue to, to smaller r, which is still positive, uh, I, uh, the, my continuation would return complex values. All right? So this is similar to Hagedorn situation. And so let me well, just a semantically call it Hagedorn regime. So this is, uh, I, I, I remind you, this is ground state energy. So it's, uh, it's uh, related by crossing to the partition sum this uh, ground state energy on a circle to the partition to the free energy of the system at high uh, at, at, at uh, finite temperature so so a, a development of the singularity uh, sort of signals particularly dense particularly high uh, density of states at high energy so that the partition sum doesn't seem to want to converge anymore the partition sum uh, trace over the, the state all right, uh, so so uh, so we th we have this uh, these two regimes, um, and uh, and in this situation it looks like there is some sort of uh, ultraviolet distance R star below which some sort of instability develops, and I want to discuss uh, what could be the, the the reason for this instability, and. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, before going into that, let me just bring up the situation with excited states because for excited states the situation seems to be inverted, right? So this is e, e vacuum, this is e vacuum. So let me plot instead the uh, first excited states. It doesn't matter if it is from this point of view if it is massive or massless particles, massless theory because. The whole thing is ultraviolet nature. So the, 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 the first excited state, which usually correspond in massive theory to one particle sitting at rest on the circle, would look like this. It would, uh, well, maybe develop some gap over here, or maybe not, and uh, maybe gap is zero. But, uh, but uh, it's, it's instead of Casimir, uh, if you put uh, the particle inside, instead of Casimir attraction, you will have Casimir repulsion, and so if you do this, uh, then uh, then then uh, you would have something like this for the first. You uh, this is E vacuum, and this is E one, and uh, here in this uh, regime, uh, you would have uh, you would have so this these lines go like this, and you would have uh, something like this. So here, all excited states are actually regular at, at zero and go right through, uh, while, while here, every excited state develops a, a singularity at some r. And uh, the, the higher the state is, the larger this r. And so, so if, if we are able to consider large energies, then the problem develops at any, at any, uh, at any uh, distance. All right, let me, uh, let me simply write down the formula. Well, I mean, I, I, I will postpone this discussion. Uh, let me simply, because I will refer to it, let me uh, write down the formula for uh, E alpha of r for c of t with central charge c so that uh, uh, e naught of r is uh, some f naught r which is not determined by c of t itself minus c pi over 6r something like that that's a standard Casimir formula right then, then E alpha of R 
is, uh, I mean, it's quadratic equation, very easy. So it's going to be f alpha r plus r divided by 2 alpha twiddle. And uh, it's 1 minus square root of 1 plus t. Where t now is uh, this combination, uh, let me call it tau instead. Tau, uh, it's a uh, tau. It's a uh, it's a combination, which is uh, in, uh, it's essentially inverse uh, square of distance, uh, two pi uh, c alpha uh, divided by three r squared. All right, and this is uh, the this uh, r star is, is very explicitly visible uh, in this formula. You mean uh, mathematical explanation or, or physics? How do you mean divergent? Did I say divergent? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I said you said singularity. I'm sorry. Singularity, yeah. Yeah, singularity doesn't necessarily mean divergent. Singularity means that if you s take a function, start differentiating it, in it like mad, at certain point, uh, so after certain differentiations, uh, one of your derivatives would blow up. That's singularity. Okay? And, uh, and why this singularity appears? The mathematical reason is, is it's, uh, well, the mathematical reason is the same as if you look at the, the hydrodynamic equation, and Burgers is a toy model of hydrodynamics, how incompressible hydrodynamic shock waves appear. And so this is the elementary version of shock wave formation. And physical reason for, 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 for appearance of the singularity in this situation, I give you as a homework. Find this interpretation. <laughs> All right. And so let me quickly, well, I mean, any questions? Because I want to, to make a 90 degree turn. Yes. 2D quantum field theory is sick. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you take a deform what, uh, what I'm going to say is that if you take a quantum field theory, deform it this way, and take a positive alpha, deformation with positive alpha, the, ground st the, the theory doesn't have ground state. That's what I said. No, at, at alpha equals to uh, equals to zero point 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 zero 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 one centimeters square. Actually, I'm going to discuss exactly this point. So maybe we could postpone this thing a little bit because uh, one thing at a time, and uh, uh, and. Uh, I feel that I'm making myself very unclear, but uh, what can I do? So let me quickly discuss this question, which I think you had to ask many hours ago. And that is, we, we found a, 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 a way to deform some theory. So what about the classical theory? We can uh, take uh, this Lagrangian, uh, classical Lagrangian, and start to deform it. Uh, this can, has a, a classical version. And so what happens to the Lagrangians? Okay. So, uh, so let me uh, quickly run through, because it actually turns out to be instructive. Okay. Uh, Okay, so I ha I, I, now I assume simple thing that I have a, a of phi integral some Lagrangian uh, of uh, uh, d2x. So it doesn't matter if Euclidean or Minkowski spa uh, space, it doesn't matter. I have uh, my Lagrangian. Now I will honestly keep only first derivatives. Okay, and uh, so now I can 
I can, uh, by standard rules, I can evaluate. My energy momentum tensor, I take TT bar uh, as um, defined TT bar as, uh, as uh, one half, minus one half determinant of T menu of X. And add this with some small portion, or much rather solve the, the differential equation. So it's not perturbative. It's a differential equation. OK, I, I create a, a family of Lagrangians depending on one parameter. So that, so that the derivative over alpha is tt bar, or if you want, minus 1 half determinant of t mu nu associated with this deformity area. OK? So to make uh, this technically easy, uh, one, uh, the best way to do that is to remember the, 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 the most uh, universal way to derive energy momentum tensor is to introduce a background metric. So instead of writing, uh, uh, so I uh, background metric. into d, all right? So I have ds squared uh, determined by some magnetic tensor, all right? And, uh, and uh, then, then my action would become a functional, both of fundamental fields and the metric uh, components, uh, and would have, uh, I would uh, want to write it in generally covariant form as some Lagrangians, then there would be square root of g to, to make a Lagrangian scalar. So you have the density here. And uh, the Lagrangian is a function of phi, d mu phi, and g mu nu, in such a way that the whole thing is generally covariant. So it's, co it's invariant with respect to uh, 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 gene uh, generic uh, uh, coordinate transformation. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I understand your question this way. This, uh, this, all these uh, patterns of levels, which appear both at uh, at positive and and negative alpha, look strange. Is the uh, and the the, the, the your question is how to explain it? Yes. Right. I tell you what happens in, in very short manner. Let's say positive alpha, OK? Uh, the, the, the ground state i already shown you. Nothing uh, happens at any distances. It, even anal smooth analytic continuation to negative r exists. If I take any, any uh, excited state, it develops a singularity. But the position of singularity is something like square root of alpha. OK, the position of singularity is now at positive r. Uh, but its, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, scale is measured in terms of square root of alpha. Remember, alpha has a dimension of length squared. And so the higher, uh, but with up to some coefficient. The higher level, the greater this coefficient. So the singularity develops at larger and larger r. OK? All right. So let, let's uh, let's get back to this thing. So so we uh, and 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 of course one defines uh, the energy momentum tensor in terms of variation of the uh, of the of the action in terms of metric. I I, I, I write down 
the, the, the textbook formula, square root of g, uh, t minus of x, delta g minus menu of x, or which is the same, minus 1 half integral d to x, uh, square root of g, a g uh, contravariant form delta g, t mu nu contra, uh, co a covariant form of t mu nu of x, and this minus is because the components of the con uh, contravariant form of g form inverse matrix uh, with respect to the, to the original one. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, then uh, then uh, then if I if I if I write this formula, I find that my t mu nu alpha alpha is something like uh, g mu nu l alpha. This comes, uh, term comes from the variation of the density part, and uh, plus twice uh, d l alpha over d g. Uh, menu and similar formula exists for the for the, uh, the covariant form and with this you can write down yourself uh, determinant of, of t in in terms of, of something quadratic in the derivatives of the of the action in the in the in the, in the Lagrangian and its deriv derivatives over g and start to solve it like mad uh, and uh, let me just produce some solutions because some of them are instructive let me start with, uh, with uh, the, the most uh, easy case, uh, what I call ultra-heavy matter, where uh, you, uh, you have some, some fields, but there is no kinetic interaction, uh, kinetic interaction at all. So my L of phi and d phi doesn't have derivative in it, so it's some V of phi. Okay, so it's, uh, or you can think of it as a, uh, as a as a either mass to, to infinity limit of of some uh, some some theory with content or uh, extremely uh, a large distance uh, extremely high resolution uh, low resolution microscope telescope I don't know <laughs> extremely bad telescope <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyways uh, the classical solutions of course are all constants or classical vacua determined by by equations uh, equation phi, uh, v prime of phi equals zero phi of x is a constant and uh, and uh, uh, I, I wouldn't even do calculation it's a uh, you can evaluate yourself ct bar uh, uh, in on this on this con configuration and it turns out to be minus e square of phi classical okay and then uh, and then you could solve this equation the L uh, dv alpha over the alpha equal to this and find your v alpha of phi to be simply v naught of phi our friend old friend already v naught of phi Okay, so this is a kind of classical version of that formula uh, for the for the dark energy uh, of the of the deformed theory. All right, now let me turn to something more contentive, uh, and namely opposite limit. I take a scalar field and start with a, with a, start with. A, I'm uh, I'm arguing for alpha positive. Yes. There's no grass here. Right. Well, it's here. It looks like alpha positive. I have nothing to say. <laughs> mm. It depends on not what we know. Is yes, okay. Right. Well, where the singularity develops. Add some constant and you. So it's is it's physical, but not quite. But I I don't I still don't understand what's the catch here. So let me start with L naught now as a function of single scalar field, scalar, 
okay, which is, uh, which is, uh, let, let me write it as one half x, where x is now g mu nu, d mu phi, d nu phi, so it's a, uh, it's uh, a, a mm, generic background version of free massless scalar field, and, uh, uh, and uh, so uh, then t mu nu, of course, you start with t mu nu, uh, not, which is uh, the, your friend, d, d minus d mu phi, d nu phi, your old friend, uh, plus d mu nu over 2, divided by 2 times d phi squared. All right, and... Uh, and just uh, a little meditation around these formulas and also dl alpha over d alpha equals to tt bar. Alpha is a uh, little meditation shows that the, the solution can be represented as, as a function of only derivatives of the fields, right? Not a first derivatives and not second derivatives and so forth. So l alpha is going to involve uh, first derivatives and general covariance then says that L alpha is some is a function of x of the same combination. All right. Then plugging in this into equation, I don't I skip technique, uh, but uh, the solution is is this. L alpha of x is uh, one, 1 over 2 alpha, 1 minus square root of 1 minus alpha, 2 alpha actually, to be precise, 2 alpha x. So it involves the square root of uh, 1 minus alpha times uh, quadratic, uh, something quadratic in the derivative. All right. Uh, uh, before the discussing it, let me generalize it a little bit and uh, discuss what is called Nambu-Gotha theory. Um, for that, one needs to to multiply the scalar fields and uh, and. Uh, Uh, take uh, now phi is going to be a phi, uh, phi uh, collection of fields. So it's going to be phi collection of scalar fields with i running 1 to n. Okay, and uh, here we are prepared to take a large n limit, but, uh, but, um, but uh, we can do it or not do it, but anyways, L0 is... is uh, uh, standard expression d mu nu, uh, d mu phi, d nu phi. Uh, there is a, actually ma a nice. Uh, if you start to to, to 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 solve it, it's complicated. But uh, but there is a nice shortcut. But I don't have time to stop on it. So let me uh, let me give you this as an exercise. Um, exercise. Show that I actually hate to give problems which which sound like show that because students come with the same <coughs> with the same formula and say see <laughs> 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 okay show that but no, nonetheless uh, uh, now I don't have a choice. Uh, so L sub alpha is uh, given by 1 over alpha. Uh, again, one mi uh, very similar expression. 1 minus a square root of 1 minus 2 alpha. X plus uh, 4 alpha squared, what I call Z. And X now is x now is uh, uh, more or less straightforward 
extension of the of x which we had before but z now what is z it's essentially a determinant okay so z is is a determinant uh, z is a determinant of what I call x mu nu, and that's the tensor, uh, the two index version of this. So uh, x mu nu is uh, is d mu phi d nu phi. All right, so it's uh, basically x is a trace of z. Okay, now uh, this looks very similar. But uh, but the form suggests relation to 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 string, right? Because the the string, I mean the Nambugata string, its action is I I I, I will be necessarily schematic here. Uh, uh, the 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 Nambugata string, its action is uh, you have a, a d dimensional space, which is in this case dimensions is, is going to be n plus two. So consider n plus two dimensional space which you can think of as Minkowski or Euclidean, depending on your preferences, uh, n plus 1, n plus 2, I'm sorry, dimensional uh, space. And uh, the, ac the action, uh, you have two-dimensional surface embedded, and you measure the, 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 the area of this, of this surface, and the action is is uh, is proportional to that area. Now, if you if you out of this all uh, coordinates uh, n plus two, you take you isolate. Uh, so you have a uh, coordinates x one, x n uh, equal to. You combine them into a vector, a vector x. Sorry, vector x. And uh, the remaining two, x n plus one, x n plus two, you isolate them and call x and y, and then and then choose a gauge in which the uh, the, the the surface is parametrized. The to points on the surface are parametrized by the by the points projected when you project the whole thing on these two axes, x and y. All right. This is locally at least. Uh, this is consistent, and then you you come up with the formula that the area is a determinant is integral over d two x. Now this is a, this is called a, the, so if I if I call if I identify this uh, with uh, with the projections uh, if I take this projection, this I think is called. Uh, uh, Static gauge. Uh, then, then you have a uh, integral of uh, square root of uh, determinant of delta menu plus uh, h menu. Okay, where h menu now is equal to uh, d mu x d nu x. All right, and if you evaluate this determinant, you get something of this structure, which is which would match exactly if you identify x with phi uh, with the factor involving square root of minus alpha. So, uh, in order to this for this to work, you need negative alpha. But as a, as a field theory, uh, so it's fine. Uh, so that's uh, how the the, the Nambugata action is created by this sort of deforming. And uh, mm, and uh, and uh, mm, and I want to say uh, the whole thing I brought up in order to have an opportunity to say that as a classical field theory, this uh, this object exists for both signs of alpha, positive or negative. And it's very relatively easy to see 
that at positive alpha, the action is not bounded from below. All right, in order to see that, so, uh, because I, I need to write something, because, because, uh, so this action, L sub alpha, with positive alpha is not, not bounded from below. Well, uh, well, actually, the, there is no uh, uh, for negative alpha where this identification is possible. It's bounded from below. Do you know how to prove it? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I was asking students. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but here it's not. Right, and and uh, sufficient to, to to display a configuration at which it takes uh, arbitrary negative values, right? And the uh, arbitrary negative values can be can be achieved on the configurations of phi, which are linear functions of of x. So if I take uh, phi of the form q mu x mu, all right, I can adjust this q in such a way that the the the, mm, the value of the section of the Lagrangian becomes arbitrary negative. This is because this mm, this determinant term uh, this determinant term uh, turns to four alpha square. So this this term z four alpha squared times z on this configuration become four alpha squared times this combi final combination q x. Uh, squared qy squared minus uh, qx qy squared all right and uh, this is uh, this is uh, easy to see that it's positive uh, but it can be arbitrarily large right by 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 suitable by by growing the magnitude of this q it can be made arbitrarily large and remember this minus sign here, which uh, which makes this this action bottomless. Sasha, we're in the last few minutes before the lunch break. Yes. All right. So so I I, I have a this way I have displayed. I actually uh, the class uh, the I actually have a so this is a okay. Yes. For n equals to twenty-four, yes, yes. But I, I do, I do believe, uh, I do believe, uh, yeah, right. So, well, I mean, there is tachyon problem and all, but whatever. It might be very well related. Yes. Yes. Yes, I want to, uh, the, the whole thing, the whole point of bringing this example up at this moment is to see first, first that at, at, at positive alpha, there is no bottom. Uh, but but it's, it actually, this conclusion demands n to be greater than 1. Because for n equals 1, this term identically 0, and the, 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 the action is bounded from below for bus time. So, so what uh, the conclusion that there is no ground state uh, uh, is, is at least, uh, I mean, it's probably valid only for sufficiently large number of degrees of freedom, sufficiently large central charge of undeformed theory and so forth. But, uh, but uh, and, and uh, so the, these two, with these two remarks, uh, we have the potential problem here. Uh, I, I, I want, actually, I was planning to next to D, d, this is uh, some particular examples of of, uh, of classical field theory, and you could say they are pathological in one way or another. But it, there is uh, some very general way to 
to analyze this, the classical situation, uh, as, as long as this is conformal field theory deformed, uh, analyze it in, uh, in ve on very general grounds and show that for a positive value of alpha, at least for large classical uh, limit where the central charge is very large, there is no ground state. Okay? And also this classical calculation, I would, I would just announce the answer and skip the discussion altogether uh, because it's long and, and technically involved one. But, uh, but it also simultaneously shows that at negative alpha, it shows in some, in, to some extent what is the nature of this singularity square root, how it appears on the classical level, uh, what it sort of means in, in the language of effective, uh, effective potential. Uh, for that reason, I'm afraid I will insist on on taking this, uh, taking on this problem next time. I will probably skip uh, some uh, uh, beautiful technical parts concerning a torus partition function then. Uh, so so the, the, the um, kind of ambitious uh, project for the next time would be to do the classical calculation or to at least to, su to some degree of explicity because here, I don't want to be to say, well, here is the answer. Because there is sim still, I'm, I'm not 100% certain I'm not missing something. And I want the students to catch me and, 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 and show me that your professor are, are stupid making this uh, conclusion too fast. All right? That's why I, 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 I would not really, in some way, insist on, on doing uh, the calculation or at least logic to some details. All right, and, and then in, if time permits, I really want to address this question of integrable field theories and their deformations and, uh, and scattering matrices and everything. All right? So this, uh, at that, that, that point, I think I will have to make very schematic. All right, thank you. <laughs>